Okay, so we're doing these epsilon, uh, epsilon n arguments, right? And the last one we did, let me sort of run through it quickly because it was important. Our last example, maybe somebody can tell me. Um, so our last example was this. Our last example was this sequence. A sub n was 2n plus 1 over 3n plus 2. Okay. And we wanted to show that the, we wanted to show that the limit of this was two-thirds as n goes to infinity. Okay. And what we did was we did some scratch work. And we ended up seeing that um, that the tolerance condition, a n minus 2 thirds is less than epsilon, uh, was the same thing as, as, as saying that, um, was the same thing as saying that 1 over 3, 3n three plus 2 is less than epsilon. And at this point, we, um, we, we used an intermediate bound. We said, we noticed that, that 1 over 3, 3n plus 2 is um, less than 1 over 9n. Right? So as long as, so, as long as 1 over 9n is less than epsilon, we're good. Right. As long as we can make a condition that ensures this, then that's enough. Okay. And we said, well, look, this is, but this is 1 over 9n being less than epsilon is the same thing as saying that um, n has to be one greater than 1 over 9 epsilon. Okay. And so that gives us our, our n. Okay. So let n be equal, equal to this 1 over 9 epsilon. Again. That's going to be our big N. And so when you write up the proof, you say, okay, um, given epsilon, let N be, right, let N exceed 1 over 9 epsilon. Right? And so N, remember, this capital N is some natural number. So just choose any natural number that exceeds 1 over 9 epsilon. Then, if little n exceeds that, we see that the distance between a sub n and 2 thirds um, namely, 2n plus 1 over 3n plus 2 minus 2 thirds, which is the same thing as which is the same thing as um, 1 over 3, 3n plus 2. This thing is less than 1 over, um, 9n. Right? But that's less than epsilon. And since n little n exceeds one over nine epsilon. <coughs> right? 
So we found, so we found an n past which the distance from a sub n to two thirds is smaller than epsilon, right? In other words, we've played the epsilon n game successfully. So, so the limit of the a sub n is, must be two thirds. So right, you secretly you figure out how to win the epsilon n game, right? And then you say, like, well, okay, I know how to do it now. If somebody gives me an epsilon, I just need to choose an n bigger than one over nine epsilon, right? And then you show that that n will work based on the scratch work that you did before. Okay. Any questions? We'll do two more examples of this. Um, uh, do two more examples of this. So the, the moral at this point is basically that um, uh, that you can introduce some sort of uh, intermediary bound, right? That makes the um, the the good thing about this is that um, to say that one over nine n is less than epsilon. Very easily gives you that. Very gives you. Very easily translates into a n bigger than capital N condition, right? This is a. You're, you're asking how big does little n have to be? Well, it has to be bigger than one over nine epsilon, right? But if I have this and I say how big does how big does little n have to be? To ensure this, well, you know, you can you can figure it out, but it's a little bit more complicated. Okay, so we. Um, we try to make it something like this. That's easier. Okay, it's easier to it's easier to see. The point of introducing this intermediate thing is that it's easier to see to see the to see this this n condition, capital N condition. Okay, so we'll do a couple more examples of of how that works, showing how how to do that. Okay, so here's another one. Um, I think these are all in your book. Okay, show that the limit of the square root of n plus 1 minus the square root of n is 0 as n goes to infinity. This is a statement basically about how flat the square root function gets. Right? The square root function gets flatter and flatter. Um, you know, doesn't change as you go on. You know, it doesn't change that much. Change less, changes less and less. Okay, so you say, okay, let's do a scratch, scratch work again. We want um, our epsilon condition is that we want this thing to be less than epsilon. Right? And we want to translate that to a statement about how big little n has to be. Right? We would like this to be basically um, implied by n being some number, n being bigger than some number. We want to find out how big does little n have to be to ensure this. <coughs> we want to figure out this condition. Okay, so you say, okay, um, uh, we're going to play sort of the standard trick with when you have square roots like this, you rationalize it. So you say, okay. This is the same thing as multiply, taking this guy and multiplying it by the square root of n plus 1 plus the square root of n over the square root of n plus 1 plus the square root of n. Right. You multiply the left-hand side by 1. Right. This thing is 1. 
And the reason you do that is so that you can get, um, like you've got this a minus b, a plus b, and so you end up with a squared minus b squared on the top. Like in other words, a squared minus b squared on the top. In other words, you get 1 over square root of n plus 1 plus the square root of n <coughs> less than epsilon. OK, so again, we have this thing. And we'd like to introduce some sort of intermediate bound. So you say, well, look, I can see that if I change this to um, to this, say, I get something bigger. Because okay. I'm dividing by something smaller, the thing gets bigger. Right. So I change the n plus 1 to an n. Right. And that gives me something that's bigger and easier to do with. Right. I get 1 over 2 roots of n. So notice, right, this thing on the left is smaller than 1 over 2 roots of n. Right? So as long as this thing is smaller than epsilon, we're good. And you see that this thing translates to a, a, a capital N condition easily. Right? So, right, so as long as 1 over 2n is less than epsilon, we're good. But that's the same thing. Uh, but you see that 1 over 2 roots of n being less than epsilon is the same thing as saying that 1 over 2 epsilons is less than the square root of n, which is the same thing as saying that n must exceed 1 over 4 epsilon squared. And so we figured out what condition gives us gives us our our epsilon control. Right. We figured out what the capital N was should what capital N works. Right. One over four epsilon squared will work. Now that's not the best thing, right? It's clearly not, you know, the best you, the best answer, but it's all we need is an answer. So you need a scratch work. Okay. You do a scratch work and you say, okay, now let's write down the proof. Given n, no, given epsilon, choose. Oops. Choose um, capital N, any capital N that exceeds 1 over 4 epsilon squared. Then, if N, little n, is bigger than that, we see that um, the square root of N plus 1 minus N equals 1 over the square root of n plus 1 plus the square root of n by the scratch work, which is less than 1 over 2 roots of n. Right? But that is less than epsilon since um, n exceeds 1 over 4 epsilon squared uh, implies that the square root of n exceeds 1 over 2 epsilon, which implies that epsilon is bigger than 1 over 2 roots of n. Did we already have that at the very top? Yes, yes. So that was our scratch work. 
and now we're writing it out uh -huh. as if that had never happened. That's, that's it, right? We found that we found the capital N that works for that epsilon. Right? We found the capital N that works for that epsilon. So we have to do absolute value to be more rigorous. Yeah, so I so I guess you'd say absolute value of N. Mm -hmm. This minus zero equals this. Okay. Yeah. So that's like if if we don't get that in that would be as rigorous. I mean uh, Yeah, I guess to be perfectly proper, yeah, you would you want to say, you know, the sequence minus the limit. Right, which equals this, which equals this. Okay. But in this case, it's so obvious that I just left it out. Okay. Yeah, so over here, when I did my scratch work, I guess I should have said something like this. Um, this minus this minus zero, and this less than epsilon is equivalent to this being less than epsilon. Okay, let's do the last example because we've got 10 minutes and I'm not even sure if that, that will be enough. Um, okay, so the last one is this one. Uh, the limit of 4n cubed plus 3n over n cubed minus 6 equals 4 as n goes to infinity. Okay, so we So we uh, do some scratch work first. I heard that there's one professor who, if this happens, just screams, get out! <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I think it's not that good. <laughs> anyway. Um, go, go away, that's what I heard. Um, okay, so the scratch work, you say, okay, well, um, right, let's look at the epsilon condition. The epsilon condition is that the absolute value of this thing minus four, we want to make less than epsilon. And you just do some translation. You say, okay, well, this is the same thing as, <coughs> oh, wait a second, this is not it. <laughs> Sorry. This is not the problem. Oh wait, yes it is. Sorry. Sorry. Minus four is less than epsilon. <coughs> okay. And that's the same thing. You do some fractions, right? You say this is this minus four n cubed plus twenty-four. Everything over n cubed minus six is less than epsilon. Right? So you just <coughs> put this minus four into the fraction. And you end up with uh, this being the n cubes, four n cubes cancel out. You end up with this being the same thing as three n plus eight over n cubed minus six being less than epsilon, <coughs> which is the same thing as saying that the absolute value of n plus eight over the absolute value of n cubed minus six needs to be less than epsilon over three. Okay, 
So, um, so you know, you'd like this to be something. So, you know, what you would really like is something like this, right? Like one over n cubed is less than epsilon over three, right? That would be great because then we just you know multiply by n cubed, divide by epsilon, multiply by three, you know, take the cube root, and then we'd be done. Okay, we don't have that, right? But we're gonna we're gonna basically work towards that, right? Because if we have something like that, then we get our end condition and we're done. Okay. So you say, okay, well, what I'm gonna do um, is uh, I'm gonna say, well, look, uh, here's our trick. You say, well, look, um, uh, for for n big enough. Um, n cubed minus 6 is bigger than a half n cubed. Okay. That is, I can basically replace this n cubed minus 6 um, with something smaller. Right. The 6 isn't going to matter that much. Right. As, as, as n gets bigger and bigger, this n cubed is definitely going to be bigger than bigger than half n cubed, right? n cubed is going to be bigger than half n cubed, right? If you work it out, uh, what do we mean big enough? Well, you can work it out. You say, well, when does that happen? This happens uh, if, as long as adding that guy to the other side, um, like you get, I'm sorry, subtracting this guy from both sides, you get n cubed over 2 must be greater than 6. In other words, n cubed must be greater than 12. Okay. In other words, as long as n is bigger than 2, we're okay. Where do we get one half n cubed? Where do we get one half? Why do we choose one third or one? We could have chosen one third or one one fourth or whatever. We could have chosen three fourths, you know, whatever. I just I just want some constant times n cubed. Okay. Yeah. That's it's not important. You're right. You're you're absolutely right to notice that. Okay. But the reason I want it, you see why I want it, right? Um so uh so you see that uh for n bigger than 2, we get that um, uh, n plus 8 over n cubed minus 6 is less than uh, n plus 8 over 1 half n cubed. Which is good. Um, so I was going to do something more complicated, but I'm, I'm going to, since there's not that much time, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do something more simple. I say, well, look, um, uh, so further, as long as, as long as n is bigger than eight, this n plus eight is smaller than 2n. Right. As long as n is bigger than 8, n plus 8, this thing on the top here, is smaller than 2n. Right? Because like, n plus 8 is smaller than n plus n, because n is bigger than 8. OK. So you say, um, if n is 9, but is it 9 plus 8 is 17, which is bigger than 16? Oh, but it's n plus 9. So it's smaller than 8. Yes. 
<laughs> You're making me work. Okay, so as long as n is bigger than 8, then n being bigger than 8, this n plus 8 is smaller than n plus n. Okay, okay, so in that case, so then for n bigger than 8, we see that n plus 8 over n cubed plus 6 is smaller than 2n over 1 half n cubed. But, oops, 1 half n cubed, that's to say 4 over n squared. How do we change n cubed minus 6 to a plus 6? Oh, I'm sorry, it should be minus 6. So what you see is that, um, so we're still doing our scratch work. So if 4 over n cubed is smaller than epsilon over 3, then we're, we're OK. Right? But that's the same thing as saying that um, n squared must exceed 12 over epsilon. But that's the same thing as saying that n must exceed the square root of 12 over epsilon. Okay, and so that gives us this and this together. Now this is the important part. We need both of these things to happen. n has to be bigger than 8, and n has to be bigger than the square root of 12 over epsilon. As long as we're bigger than both of those things, then we're OK. Right? So you say, OK, let's write down the proof then. Right? So, so we take, so given epsilon, take our capital N to exceed the greater of 8 and the square root of 12 over epsilon. So it's some number, but we ensure that it's bigger than 8, and that it's bigger than the square root of 12 over epsilon. Over epsilon. Right. You say, OK, then, just following the scratch work backwards, we see that this thing plus 3n over n cubed minus 6 minus 4 equals dot, 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 <coughs> equals um, 3n plus 8 over n cubed minus 6. Right? But that is less than or equal to 3 times 2n, right? Because n is bigger than 8, right? since n is bigger than 8, over n cubed minus 6. But that's less than you know, uh, 3 times 2n over uh, 1 half n cubed, right? Since since n exceeds 2. Right. Well, that equals um, 12 over n squared. Right. But 12 over n squared, right, 12 over n squared, over n squared, right, is less than epsilon, right, since, since uh, n exceeds the square root of 12. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'll, I'll be honest. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Okay. So we found the n that works again. It's more complicated this time, but still, we were able to do it. Okay. Okay. Let's get out. 